Your college football game day has come early. Goes down the field for Sicky. He goes up high. He's got to get away from the cup speed. And the ball is free. Woo! What a hit. You got barbecue back there? From underdog triumphs to powerhouse showdowns, we've got your winning playbook covered. <laughs> It's BetQLU with Chris Mack, RJ Choppy, and John Martin. Presented by BetMGM. And we're here, just like that. It's week 12 of the college football season. Welcome into BetQLU on the Odyssey Sports YouTube channel. And of course, you can also get us inside your Odyssey app, streaming live Fridays and even Saturday mornings. And of course, as a podcast, once it's all said and done, yeah, take us with you wherever you are in the world. Download that free Odyssey app, A-U-D-A-C-Y, and get us wherever you get your podcasts as well. Alongside John Martin and RJ Choppy, I'm Chris Mack. An update on our best bets records throughout the season. Producer Zach has been hard at work. He used an abacus, one of those TI-82 graphing calculators, and all of his fingers and toes including that extra sixth toe that nobody likes to... I'm sorry, Zach, I wasn't supposed to say anything. That extra sixth toe that nobody was supposed to talk about. He used all his appendages, and he's counted up our records. We'll update you before the end of the show and get you our latest best bets. Also, some big games to talk about. Number one visits number 18. Number five visits number 11. Take a look at the latest Heisman odds. And number three is on the road as well. But let's start there with number three, gentlemen. (sighs) The Michigan Wolverines will be without their head coach officially for the final two games of the regular season, about 24 hours before Michigan and the Big Ten were set to go into a courtroom together uh, to talk about this three-game suspension of Jim Harbaugh. Michigan and Harbaugh have said, no, we're good. We're just going to serve that suspension while the NCAA continues their investigation from the Big Ten's point of view. This is taken care of for the time being. Choppy, uh, this is not surprising. I don't think that Michigan saw some writing on the wall and said, hey, rather than continue to fight this thing, we're just going to back up and say, we don't necessarily need our coach for a trip down to College Park and a home game against Ohio State anyway. We think we can win those games without him. And then by the time we get to that point, it'll be time for the Big Ten Championship game and then the CFP. Uh, Not surprising at all to me that they decided to go this route. No, not surprising to me either from the standpoint that kind of knew, right? Like, and and it's so late. By the way, it's so late in the process. Why would they give them, you know, a Friday appeal hearing, a Friday decision, and then a Friday appeal hearing? It doesn't make any sense. And the punishment is such a non-punishment anyway. He still gets to prep the team during the week, you know, like, the, the preparation is half the battle. I mean, your game script is, you know, largely your game script anyway. Uh, he he's not the, he's not, is he, correct me if I'm wrong, he ain't the primary play caller. He's not the primary defensive play caller. So what are they really missing? They're missing a dude in khakis on the sideline. Uh, like that's, that's what they're missing, you know? So it's not, I don't think it's a huge deal uh, in the grand scheme of things. It's a massive slap on the wrist, and that's it. And they knew it, and there's no reason to fight it anymore. Yeah, they they did they handled things fine in Happy Valley. They they really put it on my boys, Penn State, John. Without Harbaugh on the sidelines, it wasn't a problem. And I kind of felt that way last week when we talked about it. That you know, given the fact that they spent the first three weeks of the season dealing with something similar anyway, that they already had the blueprint in place. And it seemed they already had the blueprint in place and they'll finish the regular season under that same blueprint. Yeah, I mean, the, the, it really didn't matter who Michigan had on the sideline because Boo Boo the Fool was on the other one. So, I mean, that <laughs> now maybe if he had gotten – He's, he's right. still trying two-point conversions. He, yeah, he's like he's practicing them throughout the week. Um, it reminds me a little bit of um, – I know it's a different sport, but four years ago – when uh, James Wiseman, you know, is now I think in Detroit, number one player in the country, he had committed to Memphis, and uh, and I don't even remember like all the details in terms of the ineligibility, but they found him. And there was like 
or uh, inducements, something that they call like recruiting inducements because Penny Hardaway gave him money and his family money back when Penny was at his high school coaching him uh, money to move to Memphis from Nashville. And the NCAA ruled him ineligible. And initially what they did was they got that that temporary restraining order. Um, and actually, even though he had been ruled ineligible by the NCAA, he played in a game, uh, <laughs> you know, against Oregon. So it was like a bizarre thing. And then they dropped it. And they dropped it because they honestly thought and believed that if they did and took the fight and, and, and dropped the fight, that it would get them lenience from the NCAA. Um, and my guess is that's sort of – um, this is pure speculation. My guess is that's what Michigan thinks right now as to why they're doing this. On top of, as RJ said, it's a pretty weak punishment altogether. Uh, and now that sort of, you know, a week has passed, you're able to go on the road and beat Penn State anyways, you're probably like, all right, the buzz is worn off. Let's just take what we what they're giving us now. They could say we cooperated and everything, and, you know, we'll avoid any real punishments down the line. So it makes sense to me. Um, we'll see if the NCAA ultimately does give them lenience, but I think that is definitely the logic. Yeah, we'll get into Michigan a little bit more when we preview, like I said, their game against Maryland. They're going down to College Park uh, for a noon kick on Saturday. It's Fox's big noon uh, this Saturday. And, I, I, again, I, I didn't think in the first place it would affect them greatly. It clearly didn't affect them that much against Penn State as much because of some decisions made on the other sideline as decisions made on their own sideline, to John's point. Uh, but we'll get into Michigan specifically in just a couple of minutes when we preview these games. Let's talk Heisman Trophy race for just a few minutes as well because RJ said something a few weeks ago, and Choppy, we're going to give you credit for something, damn it. You said something a few weeks ago. Well, that now that we look back on it, I think you deserve a little golf clap. Give it to him, Zach. What did Choppy say? Don't bet the game. Bet that quarterback. Whoever you think is going to win Oregon against Washington, don't bet the game. Bet that quarterback to win the Heisman. There you go. There's your bet. Oh. Oh. Okay. It's not often. Okay. It's not often that I hit on something. But uh, every once in a while, every <laughs> once in a while, I'll get one. I'll get one. I think I got it. I think I got that one. That's the, that's the one. Now, now it's going to turn out to be wrong, right? Well, I, is it? I don't know. What, is it? Bo Nix has has taken the 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 favorites position on the board at BetMGM at minus one ten. So maybe it doesn't prove to be right in that case. But I still think you might have been headed down the the Pac twelve path, right? I, at, mm -hmm. Because oh, we're, we're, we're giving Jr. Choppy just for the, I'm uh, trying to give him credit, right? John. Like, I'm breathe. trying to give him credit. I'm trying to. <laughs> I mean, it's like. Hey, hey, man, here's some credit. You were still wrong, but uh, here, we're going to play it anyway. <laughs> he had the conference right. He had the conference right, What John. are we doing, man? What are we doing? I was trying, trying to make the guy feel good. I'm trying. Uh, I appreciate it, yeah. man. I, I, I appreciate that one. Uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. But, you know. It's because it, it's it's between Bo and Penix, right? It's it's between those two. <laughs> That's right. Um, maybe between yeah. those two, and maybe Michael maybe. wins it. I I it have may not even be between. Those two. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have, I like it though. We're clearly in the holiday spirit around here at Beck U L U. Man, we're just like, <laughs> yes. hey, you were within like a football field, maybe of being potentially right. Yeah, I mean, so, technically, he was within a football field of being yeah. right. So. You want you want to get all high and mighty, Mister American Athletic Conference over there? I yeah. think our friend Choppy <laughs> deserves a little credit, Mister well, Power Five elitism, elitism over wait, here. Wait, 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 wait Power Five wait. elitism, Mister 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 Our Conference Champ wouldn't even be going to the playoff if JMU hadn't lost an injunction earlier this week. But that's all right. That, that's wait. okay. That's, uh, you're right. You're right, but let me make a case real quick for why it won't even be Bo Nix or maybe why it shouldn't even be Bo Nix. Okay. Because Jaden Daniels is having the best individual season than any Heisman winner since 2012 besides Joe Burrow. I mean, if you just look up these numbers, and I saw this from, a, I think, a, a Barstool LSU account, and he's got more yards per game than, 
you know, Caleb Williams last year, Bryce Young the year before, even Joe Burrow in 19. In fact, nobody since 2012 has thrown for more yards per game. Um, and if you just look at his efficiency ratings, uh, he's, he's actually better than every other uh, uh, winner since 2012 as well by 0.1, uh, 0.1 better than Joe Burrow. And I know that people are going to hold the wins and, and losses against him. I understand that. That's part of it. But they're not losing games because of Jaden Daniels. They're losing games because right. that defense is a big defense. And so then I think you start to get into the question of how much does that matter uh, and should that matter? And that's, well, look, the voters will decide that. And I think, again, the market is, is is telling you that it does value that. But should it? Isn't Jaden Daniels the most singularly talented individual in college football this year? For my money, he absolutely is. He looks like it to me. And here's my theory. And you rattled off some of the numbers. Third in passing yards in the country. Uh, number two in – yards per attempt, uh, number one in passing touchdowns, plus he's this close to going over a 1,000 yards rushing as well at eight yards per carry. Um, here's my theory. And as good as Penix is leading the nation in passing, as good as Bo Nix is, 10 touchdowns in the last two games, two on the ground, eight with his arm. Those two, I do think, you talk about boating, John. We, we forget sometimes. Like, we could get what's-his-face from MSNBC up here drawing stuff on a map explaining precincts to us because voting matters with the Heisman. And there's a Pac-12 constituency that might split their vote right down the middle. And half of them may say, I like Bo Nix. And the other half may say, I like Michael Penix Jr. And at the end of the day, it may leave an opening for Jane Daniels to garner enough first-place votes that he does rise up the board there. And that's why I think there is still choppy some value on Jaden Daniels at four to one coming off a five touchdown performance and going up against Georgia State this weekend. So he's going to put up numbers again. Oh, he's going to put up numbers again. Uh, you know, th th that's the question though. Like, does, does it matter what your team's record is? Does it matter where you are? Uh, in, in, in the grand scheme of things? Does it matter if you don't have a chance at the national championship? Those are issues, right? Those are issues that every team is going to have to face, that every player is going to have to face. We've seen guys who weren't on the best team in the country win, but more often than not, this is not really a, an award for the best player in the country. This is an award for the best player on the best team. And Jaden Daniels isn't on the best team. Like, right. there was a, he had a chance, but he what, what, what's his big win? That's going to, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to it. I guess yep. you could say, what's Bo Nix's big win to date? Utah? Right. Like, what's his big win? Uh, Michael That's Penix has got one. And this is this is what I mean about taking the two Pac-12 guys who both have excellent numbers and I think yep. are worthy of of going to New York. That's, that's wonderful. Send them there. Let them be a part of the ceremony and all. But I think they're going to split those votes right down the middle. You're going to have a lot of people out West who say, ah, Penix is the guy and Bo's close or vice versa. And Jaden Daniels mm -hmm. might sop up all those third place votes from out west and own everybody east of the Mississippi because not everybody's staying up to watch every Washington and Oregon game. And before you know it, that's how Jaden Daniels slides in. Because again, it's not like Jaden Daniels isn't worth it. And that's going to happen by accident, John. Like that's going to happen because yep. of, you know, the 202.1 quarterback rating that you talked about and the just the numbers the raw numbers of what he's done the other thing is it, it's this is just I, I mentioned the pac-12 stuff and splitting votes traditionally like i said people east of the mississippi they don't see what's going on out in the pac-12 every single week the last time you had back-to-back -back heisman winners from the pac-12 that didn't involve usc were never so we had caleb right. caleb last year you know, yeah, you could you could say it still involves USC, but it's just it doesn't right. add up for me. There's too much. Really, yeah, get I mean, Steve Kornacki out here. Break it down. Give me the precincts. And, and I would say, like, typically, you are right, Arjun, that it is best player from the best team, but it, it isn't always. You know, like Lamar was right. not on the best team at Louisville. Kyler Murray was out there on the best team with Oklahoma. Um, you know, Caleb Williams was not, on, was not on the best team in the country in USC. Uh, so to me, if you're, if you're telling me, um, the numbers are what they are and they're better than the last, you know, 11 Heisman winners and LSU finishes 
you know, in the top 10, I think it would be a mistake. I think it would be a mistake to give it to anybody else besides uh, him. Now let's see how they finish. And look, Michael Penix could go on the road this weekend and he could beat Oregon State. I know we're going to get to that game. And the calculus could change. I think in the last two to three weeks of the season, there's still a lot of room for this to shift. Um, I'm not running to bet Bo Nix, though. I can tell you that up front. I think, if anything, Penix could pass him if they go on the road this weekend and pull the upset. Yeah, there's, there's just not a lot of value left there on Knicks right now, at least as it stands. We mentioned Michigan. They're on the road at Maryland. Number one, Georgia visit, visiting Choppy's Vols in Knoxville and the aforementioned Washington-Oregon State game. We preview all three of those next alongside John Martin and RJ Choppy. I'm Chris Mack, and this is BetQLU. You've been listening to BetQLU, presented by BetMGM. If you missed any of the show, listen back anytime on the new and improved Odyssey app.
Let's get back to BetQLU, presented by BetMGM. And welcome back in live on the Odyssey Sports YouTube channel and wherever you may be in the world, streaming on your Odyssey app on Friday afternoons and evenings and into Saturday morning. And of course, as a podcast as well, download it. Take us with you wherever you're going this weekend. It is BetQLU alongside RJ Choppy and John Martin. I am Chris Mack, and we will talk about perhaps the beginning of the coaching carousel starting to spin with the firing of Jimbo Fisher in College Station. That in a couple minutes, plus our best bets, including our records up to this point. We are into week 12. We've got just two weeks of the regular season and then conference championships left. Who will go home? The King. Uh, will we tell Choppy that it's him anyway, regardless of what the records actually say? Stay tuned for another <laughs> thrilling development here on BetQLU, but let's dive I into a big one. negotiated by RJ. <laughs> right, when RJ, in, RJ it's RJ, in the Purdue, contract. I don't know. Yeah, RJ Man. missed the first week, and he said, I'm not doing this show again unless everybody <laughs> on this show tells me I'm right even when I'm wrong. If you do that, I'm back. And so we did and it. And then, boom, he was back. <laughs> yeah, you got it. I, I don't check my email. That's why I wasn't on the first week, Joe. I don't check my email. Uh, okay. All right. That's, uh-huh. that's the difference. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You got to text me. All right. <laughs> you got to text me. Uh, all right. Let's start out West. It's the, it's the primetime game on ABC Saturday night, 730 Eastern, 430 Pacific. Number five, Washington Huskies undefeated going into Corvallis against the number 11 Beavers of Oregon State. Oregon State favored in this one. By two and a half, that number has not moved, but the number on the total has continued to come down uh, all the way through 63 and a half, down to 62 and a half. I've seen some 62s hanging around out there as well. Oregon State, six and four against the spread this year, but in conference at home, three and oh against the spread. Uh, They win their last two. The Beavers are into the Pac-12 title game more than likely because they've got Washington and Oregon, the Civil War, the last time that may be played for a long time. Who knows, as Oregon State's got their own legal battle uh, alongside Washington State going against the rest of the Pac-12. Washington, we know how good their offense is. They're coming off 35 points and hanging 457 total yards against Utah, John. Both the most the Utes have given up this year. So what do they have in store for Oregon State? How are the Huskies not favored in this one? Well, they, they they opened as favorites. That's the interesting thing. Uh, they opened as a slight favorite, I think maybe two, and it's just been nothing but a torrential downpour of sharp money uh, since that opener. Um, and I think for good reason. I, I think it's, it's smart uh, because when you sort of really dig into the numbers here, A, Oregon State's a program that is just so freaking good at home. I mean, they just historically are are dominant. And then secondly, they we talked about them before the season started, guys. I mean, we, we identified Oregon State as one of those teams to watch for in the Pac-12 because of situations like this. I mean, Washington's coming in, and this defense in Washington is ranked 115th in red zone rushing touchdowns allowed. It's one of the worst in the country, and that's exactly, guess what, what Oregon State wants to do. And that's what I think they're going to be able to do. Now, look, maybe Michael Penix has a legacy game. Maybe he goes in here and has six touchdowns and, you know, he keeps RJ's prophecy alive. That's possible. Uh, (laughs) Outside of that, it feels like a game that Oregon State is going to be able to control at the line of scrimmage. I expect Michael Penix to be brilliant in spots because he just has been. I don't think that's a fluke, but I just think Oregon State's going to be able to do enough here on the ground and take advantage and exploit that Washington defense, keep it on the ground, punish them on the, uh, between the tackles, and do enough to win this game at home. That's where I'm at. I'll say this. If you believe in Oregon State and, and, and you want to find greater value on them as Pac-12 conference uh, champs, you won't because if they win this week, that number is going to come way down from the 16-1 to 1 that it's currently at. Washington at 180, Oregon at minus 190 right now, Arizona a deep long shot at 30 to 1, although they're still alive too to possibly make a backdoor entrance into the Pac-12 title game. Weird things happen at night in Corvallis, RJ. Corvallis, Ames, and uh, Columbia, South uh, South Carolina. That's where the weird things happen at night, and uh, Corvallis is absolutely one of those places. 
when I first saw this number that it had jumped to Oregon State minus two and a half, I was stunned until I realized, like, wait a second, you know what? <clears throat> that's a that's a tough place. Like that that is a brutal place to play. And Oregon State, the, their style of play, I think, is very very difficult in twenty twenty three for some of these teams uh, to match up with. So I I am it's good. It's going to be really really hard for me to pick against Washington because I generally am a whoever the best quarterback on the field is. That's the guy I'm going with. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some situations in the college game where that doesn't happen. This might be one of them. Um, this I, I keep going. I have like two games, my best bets. This is one of them. And I keep going back and forth on whether to have this thing in it or not. Yeah, this is a tough one for me as well. I, I don't know. Like you said, the better quarterback. I, I've been on quarterbacks all year. That's been my philosophy the whole way through. I, I am stunned. Uh, not, I shouldn't say stunned or shocked that money has come in on Oregon State for all the reasons both you guys mentioned. I just I have a hard time seeing Washington not get out of there with the victory with everything they've built to this point on the line. I think they do pull it out, which obviously getting points uh, would work in my favor in this case. Let's move to the SEC. Uh, the afternoon game on CBS, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central kick in Knoxville. Number 18, Vols, absolutely embarrassed by Mizzou last week. Uh, they get number one, Georgia, who still seems to be looking to prove dummies like me wrong. Tennessee's lost to Florida and Bama already. Maybe they bounce back and show some life against Georgia. I just worry here, Choppy, that the Vols, 7-3, and kind of in that weird limbo where they're bowl eligible, but are they, they're not really playing for a New Year's Six game or an SEC championship berth anymore. They're just kind of meh there. Uh, and Georgia is still looking to prove that hey, we kind of we were sleepy in some first quarters and first halves earlier this year. But look what we've done to ranked teams. We played three ranked teams, and we've stomped each and every one of them by on average four touchdowns. So, does Georgia break the record uh, for consecutive victories in the SEC uh, that's been held by Bama for going on thirty years now with a win in Knoxville? And do they cover the ten? More importantly. Uh, the ten's gonna be tough because uh, that Tennessee does play really, really well at home. Uh, they're a much different team at home. But what Georgia's done the last couple of weeks, and what I expect them to do this week too, is is they've gone to the back of every member of the SEC and whispered in their ear, "Daddy's home," and that's what they've done. That's exactly what they've done. Daddy's home, like daddy, da- they're back. Uh, this they, they don't need Brock Bowers. They don't need anybody. They needed a few weeks for the quarterback situation to get comfortable, uh, for them to figure out what they were going to be this year, because it is a little bit different of a team. But, man, make no mistake about it, daddy's home right now. And and Georgia is the best team in the country today. I think the committee nailed it this past week when they they put them over Ohio State. I thought Ohio State deserved it the first couple of weeks. I I thought Georgia deserved it here. The way they put it to Ole Miss, I mean, the way they put it to Lane Kiffin, my God. Goodness, that team is on a mission right now. I don't know if they cover, you know, double digits on the road against a team that plays really, really well at home, a much different team at home. But I, I don't see how there's – I don't – Tennessee would have to play their best game, a dang near perfect game to, to win. Uh, they may have to play a perfect game to cover, but they got to play a perfect that's, game yeah, to win. That's what I was going to say. They got to play a perfect game to cover. John, in, in their three games against ranked opponents, I mentioned this earlier, the – Georgia is averaging 44 points a game and giving up only 17 a game on average. That Kentucky game that I think we all went into saying, eh, who knows? You know, anything can happen. Georgia's been asleep, woke the sleeping giant. And that was the first of those three games against ranked teams. And now they got another one. They, they're, they're, look, they're going to Knoxville, so anything can happen. But I, I expect Georgia to just pull, just drop the mic on everybody this weekend, and to RJ's point, prove why they're number one. Yeah, I mean, I think I know we get bored, right? We get bored with, um, you know, Georgia's doing this week in and week out, but that right. doesn't still mean it, you know, won't happen. Uh, uh, with the exception of the first year that Kirby Smart got the job, uh, this game has not fallen within ten and a half. 
2017, it was 41 to 0. 2018 was 38 to 12. 2019 it was 43 14. 2020, 44 21. 2021, 41 17. Then last year, 27 13 in Knox. I mean, once you just have that psychological uh, hold on a team, it's really hard to break. And I didn't really see a lot last week. And I was on Tennessee last week. I didn't see much in the way of being able to get out of that. I mean, they just kind of laid down against Missouri. I don't know what happened. Um, it, it, they just they couldn't get a single stop all game long. They moved the ball fine, right? But they just couldn't get any kind of stops. And if you're having a hard time against Missouri, it feels like you're going to have a much hard time against Georgia. Yeah. So with the, with the combination of things that you guys have mentioned in terms of, like, what are you playing for now at this point? Like, nothing. I mean, yeah. you're playing spoiler. I mean, is that really going to be something that, you know, brings the best out of Tennessee? I, I don't think so. And it's fine, by the way. Like, I, I don't mean this is like some referendum on Tennessee football. Like, Josh Hype was doing a good job. I mean, last year was was incredible. And who knows how far they could have gone before the injury to, to, to Hooker. But, uh, you know, as far as this year goes, uh, I don't really think there's there's much left to accomplish. Well, yeah, I'll I'm say with this. you there. I'll, I'll say this. Dolly Parton singing Rocky Top there. That's right. That is okay, an Dolly. That is an hang on. Dolly is singing Rocky Top. All right. And that that is enough. That that's worth six points. That's worth six points right there. Maybe <laughs> wow. five and a half. Maybe okay. five and a half. But I think that's worth something. Okay. All right. <laughs> Got it. All right. So the RJ yeah, yeah, metrics. It's a, it's, Yep. <laughs> 77 years young, Dolly, uh, back there singing Rocky Top in Knoxville. She's, yeah. amazing. She's an uh, amazing woman. I love her so much. Crazy. It's crazy, man. It's absolutely a new album coming out. She's nuts. Anyway, uh, I'm giving away the fact that I, I was working on a country music station before. Uh, Saturday clearly. at noon. Clearly. I've been studying my country. Country Chris. Uh, Saturday at noon. I got Texas in my roots. I'm, I'm not going to tell sure. you about it. I, yeah, Michigan at Maryland without Harbaugh. Does it matter? No. Michigan is embodying Big Ten football right now, guys. They're laying 19, 19 and a half, total somewhere around 49 and a half or 50. Um, they're averaging 173 rushing yards a game while also leading the Big Ten with 39 points per game. They are absolutely bleep stomping opposing defenses. And how about this? Their defense, first in the Big Ten, only giving up 232 yards a game and 7.5 points per game. Outside of last week's nine-point win over Penn State, they are averaging a 37.7-point margin of victory in the Big Ten. In conference, margins of victory of 24, 38, 42, 45, 49, 28, they're dominating. Michigan's lost four of their last, or excuse me, Maryland's lost four of their last five. They scored only 13 against Nebraska. Tonga Vailoa doesn't look like himself. The offense hasn't eclipsed the 400-yard mark in six weeks. They're on the backslide, and Michigan is just fine-tuning some things as they get ready for the Big Ten Championship, for Ohio State, the Big Ten Championship game, and then the playoff, John. Yeah, I mean, I, I think in terms of this, this one, uh, it, there is nothing for me. Um, I think, like in terms of, like I always look for, um, you know, w w angles. I mean, I guess, like, you know, I mean, you, you, you I guess you want to say, you know, it's not even the look ahead though to, you know, Ohio State. I mean, it's or, or it is, but it's like it's Maryland. So do I do I want to really get involved with Maryland, who's been just uh, dreadful all year long? The emotional sort of uh, us against the world thing is obviously gone with the, you know, uh, dropping of the of the TRO pursuit here. Um, I mean, like, when it comes to these big spreads, Michigan has not covered uh, – they did not cover that uh, – I, I don't remember exactly what it was against uh, Purdue. I think it might have been like 33, not nearly as big here. But because they don't pass, you know what I'm saying? Like, if they yeah. get stopped ever on a third down, I mean, three is just such a killer, you know, with a point spread like this, right? And you look at that second half against Penn State, they, they – they threw the ball one time. It didn't go down as a statistical a statistical category because it was a pass interference. But they were completely content to just drain every second from this from that game. So that's how they play. I'm not really looking to back a 19 and a half point road favorite that plays like that. Yeah, they're just looking to get to Ohio State. It looks like choppy. 
Uh, yeah, and this could be one of those trap games, man. We've seen teams. Now, this is a night game. I think it's much different. You might have a much mm-hmm. different situation. Plus, Maryland has no home field advantage, none. Uh, right. This is not like uh, you, you'd be going into Florida at night if you're – you know, Alabama waiting to get into the, uh, you know, to the, to the SC championship game. That could be a real big trap. This isn't like that. This is Maryland. Uh, it, the best thing they have going for them is maybe they wear the uniforms with the funky state flag helmet. That's just really busy and really annoying. Other than that, I, they got, that's they, it. I, I don't see how they, how this is a, a real big threat for Michigan. Um, you know, the, the Harbaugh thing, I think it's like kind of, galvanize them a little bit maybe maybe it has maybe it hasn't but i you know i think there's a chance that this has kind of made them an us against the world mentality you know most people have to look for that they have to manufacture those uh bulletin board material items and they've got to manufacture us against the world man michigan doesn't have to do that you ain't america's team i'll tell you that right now all right that ain't america's team uh but whatever that nonsense was by harbaugh but i think it definitely has galvanized them I, I would probably stay away. It's a lot of that's a lot of points to give up on the road. But yeah. if I was going to bet this game either way, it definitely would be Michigan at a nineteen and a half. Yeah, if I had to, if you were if you were pulled my feet to the fire, I would go with Michigan and lay the 19, 19 and a half. But to John's point, you know, it's the, the way they've squeezed the air out of football games in second halves. They may be up by so much that it doesn't matter in the second half at, at Maryland. But it's definitely yeah. something to it's keep a teaser an eye game. on. You know what? That's a, that's a pretty good call too. That it, it, it you could put put it in as part of a teaser. Uh, they have been or teased in college the under, right? If you bet the under, you're probably covered. I mean, yeah, M- Maryland's not going to score. <laughs> so that's true. I mean, Maryland's you're, not you're, putting you're up more than off, two touchdowns in this thing. Yeah, that's yeah, and no, that I mean, even you, that would be a small know, be minor miracle. Yeah, uh, I, I mentioned College Station. Uh, they're looking for a coach. Who's next at Texas A&M? We go over some of the odds on who the next coach could be with Jimbo on the way out. Update you on our best bets records and give you our plays for this week, week 12 of the college football season alongside RJ Choppy and John Martin. I'm Chris Mack and this is BetQLU. You've been listening to BetQLU, presented by BetMGM. If you missed any of the show, listen back anytime on the new and improved Odyssey app.
Let's get back to BetQLU, presented by BetMGM. And we are back live on the Odyssey Sports YouTube channel. And, of course, inside your Odyssey app, A-U-D-A-C-Y. Uh, download it today. It's free. And however you get your podcast, make sure you're following and subscribing to BetQLU. Week 12, we are here breaking it down for you. G- about to get you our best bets and an update on our records on best bets alongside RJ Choppy and John Martin. I'm Chris Mack and Jimbo Fisher. Man, that buyout is just, whoo, baby, 70-some million bucks to go away and not come back, please. Uh, But this could, in effect, get that coaching carousel started. We saw a coordinator firing at Penn State. Um, There's some openings starting to come up. And with that comes, well, our our job is guessing who's going to go where. Uh, offshore odds for the next AM coach, Mike Elko, Duke head coach, plus 350. Dan Lanning, Oregon, uh, back to the, the SEC, 6-1. to one. Uh, Kalen DeBar at Washington, 6-1. to one. Lance Leopold, 9-1. to one. You get down to Lane Kiffin and Mike Norvell at 12-1. to one. John, uh, th- do any of those names make sense to you as the next AM coach? And if not, where do you cast an eye toward if you're the Aggies? Damn near all of them, man. Like I, when I saw the candidates that, you know, whether it's Pete Thamel, whoever put out there, it was like, like this candidate list is like the wet dream of 99.9% of college football <laughs> fan bases. Like this is the coaching candidate list that every program thinks they're going to have. And then they wind up having like us, you know, right. like they got to go <laughs> hire like a, Co offensive coordinator from you know somewhere, and he might end up being good, but you guys get what I'm saying. Everybody always yeah. wants a high profile name, and rarely is that ever what they end up with. Um, I think Texas AM would be really wise and smart to hire Mike Norvell, and I think Mike Norvell would be really smart to go. Uh, because I would ask him, Is it ever going to get better than this year at Florida State for you, man? Right? No, yeah, it's not. I mean, realistically, right? Clemson has kind of figured it out at the back half. I mean, they they shot themselves in the foot early in the season, so they're really not in the discussion. But, you know, clearly they are adjusting, and they're going to be back in the mix. I just, I, I believe they're going to make some changes to get back in the mix. And Dion happened to fall off, right, relative to how hot he started. Uh, but he's going to get hot again. He's going to keep getting players at Colorado. He might even get a different job. And are those whispers for him at Florida State – ever going to stop buddy if you ever have a seven and five season if you ever have an eight and four season your ass is grass there why not go back to texas which is where you're from you have connections there get a brand new fat contract and get a new lease on life i think it makes all the sense of the world and i think he's energetic enough i think he's smart enough and i think he would absolutely uh embody that job in many ways he'd win he'd compete he'd get after in the sec i think it's a perfect match that's where i would look if i was a and m yeah, and to your point, he he gets he gets to the SEC and he doesn't have to sit around and wait for some kind of conference realignment nonsense uh, that everybody keeps talking about, where Florida State and Clemson may go SEC. When in reality, it may never happen. Uh, Choppy, I, I look at the two Pac-12 guys, soon to be Big Ten guys, and wonder what would be in it for them. They're getting the essentially the bump, the upgrade from the Pac-12 to the Big Ten next year, landing in Oregon, DeBoer in Washington. Would it make sense to jump ship to go to a, an SEC program? Yes, but a program that feels like it's stalled out for the better part of a decade now. So the reason to go to AM versus Oregon is you never have to get on an airplane to get all the recruits you need. Like right. that's the that's the draw at AM. I, I gotta be honest, if I was a power five coach, and I don't mean I don't mean light bulb and I don't mean Elko because they're they're in the power five, but they're not. Like Kansas and Duke's not the power five, right? Right. I'm not going to AM. I'm not taking that job. That is that is like a that's like Michigan State. It's a very unique, very difficult job. They're they in in six weeks, they lose their greatest selling point to recruits, which is you could play in your home state in the SEC, and we are the only avenue. That allows you to do that. In six weeks, when this season's over, and we've got signing right. day or whatever, 
Texas is Texas again. And every five-star player in this state that wants to stay at home uh, or stay within three hours of home and also play in the SEC no longer has one option. They've got three because they got Oklahoma, which if you live in the DFW area, Dallas-Fort Worth, you're closer to Norman than you are to Austin. Um, You're closer to Norman than you are to College Station. So, like, all that's opened up. If I'm Norvell, I'll be like, look, Dion, come here, man. Like, you know, wow, cool, Dion. You went from last place in the Pac-12 to last place in the Pac-12. That's what they're going to wind up being. Um, so, like, it's not like – and if he loses his job, Mike Norvell's going to get a, a number of other jobs somewhere else. Um, the guy is Jeff Trailer. That's the guy to go to. He's a Texas guy. He's, at UT, he's the UT San Antonio coach. He's done nothing but win. He won in high school. He had like three or four state championships in high school. He he has won at UT San Antonio, and he has won with other guys' players, which I think is a huge boost for a coach. And I, I think he is perfect for that job. He's got a he's got a kind of a Texas feel to him. The way he spoke um, about the university this week, you could tell that he would like absolutely love having that job. The job would mean a lot more to him than it might mean to Dan Lanning. Um, I love the Elko idea because Elko has been down there. Uh, so yeah. I, if I'm Norvell, if I'm if I'm um, if I'm landing, I'm like, I don't need I don't need to deal with that. I don't need to deal with that culture down there. It's it's they they expect they expect to be Alabama. They're mm. closer to Mississippi State than they are mm. to Alabama. Mm. Right? They just need to recognize that and they don't. Clip that up. And let R and let RJ put it out to his uh, Texas followers. Okay, if you don't tweet this clip, I'm gonna be real disappointed. I'm gonna say, you know what, RJ don't want the smoke. He don't want the smoke if he don't put this on his social media. I want to see like I, I want to see billboards on I-35 that just have <laughs> RJ's face and that quote right. next to it, so that 100%. every everybody up and down the interstate in that half of Texas can see it. That's a great call. I like Elko too. Um, I would take a big, a big fat walleted swing at Dan Lanning, but I wouldn't expect him again. I, I, it doesn't make sense to me if I'm Dan Lanning, I'm going to the big 10 anyway. You're right. You make a good point. You don't have to jump on as many planes. Uh, there's not as much travel, but eh, I'm at Oregon and I'm going to the big 10 and I got a chance uh, to, to do some things as one of the two, you know, big power conferences going forward. But I like Elko as well. All right. Producer Zach went to great lengths. Uh, He had calculators, he had spreadsheets. There was a lot of information flying around. I'll be honest. It was like the, like the gif from the hangover where Zach Galifianakis has all the formulas and numbers floating in front of his face. He came up with our records for best bets, and I'm in the lead. I'm just going to say this guy right here has two wow. thumbs and has the best record so far. Seven, five, and one. Uh, RJ, five, four, and two, not including the, the 0 for 6 on the parlays. Although this close on the Pizza Money parlay last week, if hey. my Nittany Lions would have come through to hitting a 43 to one shot. And the esteemed Mr. American Athletic Conference himself, John Martin, five, five. And one. So, room temperature. For Nobody's Mr. losing. No one's Memphis. losing. No losing records on the show, though. You're, I mean, that's pretty you're impressive. Making, over you're making years. money. If you're going with BetQLU's right. best bets, you're making money. So, let's that's give right. it to him again for this week. John, lead us off. What do you got? Well, I mean, it wouldn't be me if I didn't stay in my home turf, would it? AAC, baby. A-A-C. And I want to say I appreciate RJ. Somebody is uh, stepping up for an AAC head coach this week. I appreciate you. It ain't going to happen. That's right. But I appreciate you doing it all the same. You know what I'm saying? I know Jeff does too. Uh, I'm going to go with Memphis plus eight and a half. That's still out there. Uh, SMU has been a juggernaut. There's no question about it. But this has just gotten out of control. I mean, this has been one-way traffic on SMU. It opened at six and a half, and it got all the way up to nine and a half before it immediately got bought back down. This is the biggest – uh, number Memphis has been an underdog at home as since uh, Ole Miss in 2015. Uh, may I remind you, they won that game outright by two touchdowns, basically. Uh, Memphis can score. I don't think uh, necessarily Memphis wins. I think it is going to be a lot to ask of them. 
but I do think they're absolutely going to be in position to cover this number and keep it close with Seth Hennigan in that offense. So give me Memphis over a touchdown at home where they're just historically great. I'll take the Tigers. All right, Choppy, what do you got? All right, well, I do have a quick 24-1 to pizza money parlay for you. Uh, Utah State, Cincinnati, and UTEP on the money line. Uh, but my game of the week, you know, I'm going to Ames, Iowa. I'm going to Ames, Iowa. I got Iowa State. Right now, it's plus seven and a half. I'm taking Iowa State. Weird things happen at night in Ames, Iowa. I am taking Iowa State. But here's the trick. This is going to jump to eight. This is going to get to eight. I am waiting until morning of. This is going to get to eight points. I'm going to take it at eight points. But give me Iowa State and the points over Texas. Crazy things happen in Ames, Iowa at night. You're absolutely right. All right. I'm going money line on a dog. I got a money line dog, a team that's going to secure its spot in the Mountain West Championship game with a huge win on the road. Mm -hmm. UNLV is going in to take care of business against Air Force. Brennan Marion and the go-go offense. He's my guy for the Penn State offensive coordinator job, too. I'll do my best to lobby people for that when I'm up there at the Rutgers game this weekend. Nobody will listen to me. It's okay. But I'll take it at plus 130 on the money line. UNLV and the running Rebs get their ninth win of the season for the first time in nearly three wow. decades. A nine-win season for UNLV. They They'll get it wow. on the road at Air Force, plus 130 on the money line for my guy, Brendan Marion. Yeah. Greensburg saving. Kenny Brad. Main was the quarterback uh, last time they won nine games. <laughs> You're right. Oh, my God. Oh, Jeez. dear Lord. Uh, and, and you know what? Even if you're wrong, RJ, we're going to tell you you're right I'm anyway because that's what we do I'm here on Bet QLU. That's, way wrong. That, that's what we do. Baby. No, you're right. You're right. It doesn't matter <laughs> what Choppy says goes. It's always right. Alongside RJ Choppy and John Mart, we'll do it again next week. Make sure you're following or subscribed however you get your podcasts, including in that free Odyssey app and watching every Thursday night on the Odyssey Sports YouTube channel. This has been Bet QLU. You've been listening to BetQLU, presented by BetMGM. If you missed any of the show, listen back anytime on the new and improved Odyssey app.